Well, we're going to move on to, um, okay, let's take a look at this example first and then we'll move on to chapter 13. Here's an example that looks at the entire equity section. I want to bring this up because we haven't talked about any problems that look at both sides, paid in capital and retained earnings. So here it tells you that there's 8,000 shares of $2 par value common stock. And then there's also uh, $50 outstanding. The, the original issue price for the stock is $15. Now it tells you there's a deficit balance of retain earnings. Remember we talked about this last week. Deficit balance is a negative balance of retain earnings. Sometimes it happens in the beginning of the company when they haven't started generating net income yet. All along they had was net loss. So it tells you the net loss total amount is $86,000. So if I ask you to complete a, just a stockholder's equity section for this problem, it would look like this. And you would have common stock, 8,000 times 2, which is the par value amount. Then you have paid in capital in excess of par value, $104,000. And the retained earnings has a negative balance, so it's a deduction account for the entire equity section. Okay, meaning on the balance sheet, there's asset, liability. This is what the equity section will look like. The equity section breaks down to two parts, paid in capital, externally raised fund, and internally generated. It tells you up to this point, they haven't generated net income yet. So this is a total amount of net loss. That's why it has a negative balance. You know, the upper part is the total amount of stock that they issued. Altogether, they issued 8,000 shares. The original issue price is $15. Face value is $2. So the difference is, is the excessive, like the premium of stock, $13 per share. Okay, so you will have three categories under stockholders' equity, two of them under paid-in capital. One is retained earnings. The 104, 104,000. That's the premium for. Oh, the 120. Yes, this is add them up, add the two. Because we're calculating the total equity. So upper part, this is the contributed capital. This is the negative balance of retained earnings. Okay. Generally speaking, later on, once the company starts generating net income, if this part is positive, usually it's positive. For most cases, you see here then we would add paid in capital and retain earnings. But this is a problem that tells you it's a deficit balance, meaning they haven't generated an income yet, so we subtract it. Okay, chapter 13, we're still on the top.